Hi, in this video I'm going to cover how to use the let function. Now the let function is one of the newer functions that are only available in Excel for Microsoft 365 or the Excel Microsoft 365 from the Mac. For those that have a familiarity with programming or even VBA, which I don't have a large knowledge of VBA, this is probably something that you would love because it is almost like defining a variable. You can assign a name to a value and then perform calculations on that name. At its most simple, decide to have a name. X is something, and you're going to find 1 for X. Now, X plus 1 is going to be 2. So if I do something similar here, let's say I decide to say X is 10, and maybe something different. Define two variables. Y is 20, right? In this instance, I would use the let function. Open, let, open parentheses here. And for X, I'm going to give that value the 10. And then for another value, y, I'll give that value 20. And then after that, after I define my name value pairs, then I'm going to perform some calculation. Let's say I just do sum of uh, x and y. Close parentheses, close parentheses, press enter, and you have 30. But then you think to yourself, boy, that was a lot to do. All I need to do is just type equal, maybe I'll define x here, and then plus y there, right? And I get 30. And it's much easier to write that. Well, the thing that let gives you, the benefit it gives you is two things here, according to Microsoft. Improved performance, because this calculates it more efficiently, and also easier reading. And the easier reading gets to instances where you're writing a little bit more complex formulas or functions, and you're calling the same one or similar one multiple times. So let's see how that would work. So let's say I, I have the scenario where we have different employees uh, every fortnight. They are given the opportunity to volunteer and, and the group of employees that volunteer over a particular threshold, their particular hours will be maybe doubled, right? And so the company might give a doubling matching for their hours that they volunteer. So in this instance, uh, I've made this particular, these cells random values. So they'll, they'll, partition, they'll go between one and four. And let's say we sum it up here. We'll just sum it up and we'll use this as kind of like our calculation here or a base for our calculation. So we know that in this group, uh, they've volunteered a total of 10 hours, 6 hours, and 10 hours. So maybe we're going to use an if formula to indicate, well, which grouping over a certain amount will get uh, that double of the hours. So if we wrote an if statement, that's going to be if, now I've, I would do sum, open parentheses, maybe I'll sum this thing up, sum this up. If that sum is greater than, let's say the threshold is eight hours for each fortnight, then what we want to do is we want to sum it again, and then we'll select that again, B2 to D2, and we'll multiply it by two. So we're going to multiply that hours. Now, if their hours aren't greater than that threshold of eight hours, we're just going to sum that press sum, type sum, and we'll sum it again here, right? Close parentheses, close parentheses, press enter, and then you see it's 22 because they went over the eight hours. Now, what you see here is we basically replicated that sum three times here, over here, over here, and over here, right? And that's what we've done. Press escape. And let me double click to bring that down, right? So with the let function, we don't really need to select that range again. And it also makes it easier to read because we're defining a name and, and naming it is easier than kind of trying to figure out what does B2 to D2 equal. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to type let, and then now we're going to define the name. So we're going to say, maybe this, we'll call this total hours. So we're defining a name for this and it's more um, easily decipherable, readable name. So we know what it means. So our total hours, we're going to define that as the sum of B2 to B D2, right? So after we figure that one out, then now we're going to say, okay, now we're going to put in the calculation if the total hours, so we're going to say total hours. And you, the nice thing about this, when you define it, now, if you only type in a couple letters, it's going to give you that as part of a hint, a drop down. So we have total hours here, so I'll just double click that. If that total hours is greater than or, or greater than eight, 
right? Greater than eight. Then I'm going to do total hours again. And you can see it's there. I don't even need to type it the, out the whole thing times two. Otherwise, just total hours, right? Because I have already, already defined total hours as the sum of that range there. Close parentheses, press enter. Oops, I needed another parentheses to close that, and Excel was helpful enough to add that in. Let's click yes, and then we have our seven. Double click that to fill it down. And what we've done is, instead of repeating this particular range selection here, B2 to D2, three times, all we need to do is define that range in our name value pair here, the first one here, and just repeat that and just call that name again in our calculation or the rest of our calculation formulas here. So it just makes it easier to read when you really think about it in terms of creating the formula and also if you need to troubleshoot later on if you've given it a meaningful name. So there's a basic overview of the new let function in Excel. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.